Hey, good morning. Welcome to church. Glad you tuned in uh, here at New Life Assembly of God in Sparta. Listen, this morning, I want to talk to you a little bit about that we can't focus on what we don't have that we want and that we normally have in these times of this uh, virus and stay-at-home principle. And I want us to remember what we still have. So I want you to walk along with me. You know, on Sunday mornings, uh, I just love that you're here. And I will tell you that I miss you. Sue and I miss you very much. You know, when I come out on Sunday mornings, this is a room that I kind of stop by. And uh, there's usually a few of the same characters in this room, you know. Uh, over here sits uh, Big Bill. And uh, over on the couch over there, uh, Cedric. And in the corner there, nobody could sit in that chair except Bob Frisky. And every once in a while, Bill's wife, uh, Cheryl Rent, she's in here. She's making sure that these guys are conducting themselves okay. And so I usually pop in, say hi quick, shake their hand, and I'll tell you what, I miss that. You know, another thing I miss is this lobby. This lobby is basically like a second fellowship hall. It's where so much interaction happens between people. And on my way, you will see ushers here by the door. You'll see our hospitality behind this counter and helping people get to where they need to be. But up here at this door, this is one of the most important posts in the church. It is where people break the threshold and leave behind their week that they're carrying with them and they walk into this place. And we want the Lord to minister to them from the moment they come through the door. And you know what? There's people here that are usually greeting, shaking hands, meeting children, getting names, because every person's important. And I'll tell you what, when we're not here in this place, it's just not the same. I come through here on Sunday mornings, and the place is empty, and it's tough. Um, I will tell you that. Um, I miss you, and us getting together. Um, I am not by, you know, my gifting and my nature is not to be on social media, I'm going to stop, shake hands, talk, and interact with people in person. And I'll tell you, for a guy like me, this is tough these days. And uh, I want you to come with me, though. You'll recognize this room. This, is, this room here, I want you to know, everybody, this room's still here. And when we go into this room, I want you to know that the chairs in this room are begging for you to come and sit in them around these tables. This is a great place for us who come to church here normally, but for visitors who come and enjoy a time where this room is filled with noise. You can smell the great coffee. There's always pastries and cookies and things like that. I want you to know this room, this room misses you. And if I think about these things that I miss, I want you to know it affects the way that I start to think. It affects the way that I feel. You know, coming by this coffee bar here. And, you know, there are those who serve that I don't get to say hi to on Sunday morning. Uh, the smell of coffee in this room, it, it isn't here on Sunday morning because you're not here. And when I think about these things, it can affect me emotionally, you know. And uh, we can get caught in a trap. Even you at home. You're not here, you want to be here, you miss your friendships, you miss the worship, all of those things, the church ministry, you know, the youth down in this room, the children's ministry down in this room, filled with noise and activity, and all the children are, you know, trying to behave and walk when their parents want them to, and I just want them to run through the place and enjoy it. I miss those moments, some of the children coming up and hugging me and giving me a high five. Some of the teenagers, I get to put my arm around and, you know, punch them a little bit and let them know the old man, he still got it right. When I think about what I miss and I forget about what I still have, it takes me down. So I want, I want us to look at this morning as a scripture where God's people, Psalm 137, they were in Babylon exile. I want you to, I want you to listen to this, Okay. Psalm 137, by the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there, we hung up our harps or our lyres.
For there our captors required of us songs and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my hand forget its skill to play. Let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I don't remember you. If I don't uh, set Jerusalem above as my highest joy. Remember, O Lord, against the Edomites, the day of Jerusalem, how they said, Lay it bare, lay it bare, destroy it to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to be destroyed, blessed shall he who repays you for what you have done to us. Blessed shall be the one who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Listen, this, this passage of Scripture, it talks about a time where God's people, they couldn't get together in the house of the Lord. They couldn't get together and worship in Zion and in Jerusalem, their home. They were exiled in Babylon. And they got to a point where they focused on what they didn't have that they longed for in their hearts. And it caused them to come to a place to hang up their harps and to come to a place where they didn't sing God's praise. Listen, what a terrible place for them to come to that they, gave, they got to a point where they gave up praise. Listen, we don't get together at this church building, you know, and we miss it. And we want, we want to be together. We want to worship the Lord. We want to praise Him. And yet we can't get together and do it. This is not a day to hang up your harp. This is not a day to put your instrument on the tree. It's not a day to keep your voice silent until we get together again. Of all days that we're living, these are the days that we should still shout to the Lord. We should fill our home with praise, fill our mouth with, you know, uh, Scripture. And in your prayer time, it is the time for us to, to speak the Word of God to ourselves, to other people. This is a time, you know, for us to worship the Lord, not close our mouth. This is a time for us to continue to praise and focus on what we still have. And that is a God who cares for us and a God who is for us and a God who's not against us. That in these days, we need to capitalize on the moments in our private life um, where we may have extra time or downtime, that this should be a time of praise and worship and remembering what we still have instead of focusing on what we don't have and that we can't come together. Hey, it grieves my heart. Listen, I'm in a sanctuary today and it's basically empty of people. It is a challenging thing for me to do, to stand in here and preach the word of God and just believe that you're out there tuning in and I'm in an empty room. But I want you to know that I had some practice at this in some of my early days of ministry. Because I would practice sermons in an empty room. I would go to a, where I youth pastor, and I'd go to a youth, the youth room, and I would practice some of my message. There's times I would practice pieces of it at my home or my apartment. Yeah, I've preached before to an empty room. I mean, I was there, and hopefully the Lord. But you know, when I'm used to having all of you here, and we get to shake hands and get to hug and exchange dialogue and conversation, joke a little bit, pick on me a little, pick on you a little bit, laugh, still have moments where I hear what's going on in your life and get to put my arm around you and pray with some of you. I want you to know as your pastor, I miss it. But I can't focus on what we don't have. I don't want to hang my harp on the tree or close my mouth from praising God. What a sad state we would be in. I want you to know there are many reasons that we should continue to worship and praise the Lord. Listen, I want to give you five quick little reasons of why you and I we need to continue to grab our instrument or pick up our voice and worship the Lord in our homes or in your yard or in your garage or in your private uh, room where you pray, wherever it is. 
This is not a time for us to be silent before the Lord with our praise and worship. Just because we can't come together in a building? Listen, I am so glad that God doesn't just live in this building. That he lives in us. And then he's present with us. And he's with you. And he's in your home. And you might feel lonely from time to time, or you might feel shut in moments uh, during your day or your week. I want you to know the Lord's there. And we, will, we invite Him more when we begin to look to Him and we recognize that He's present by singing to Him, by declaring His wonders, declaring statements of faith, reading Scripture out loud, talking to Him, and listening to Him. It's not a one-way street. I don't want us to get to the point where we just long for our Zion and we forget um, you know, what we have and we long for what we don't have at the moment. So I want you to look at five quick reasons of why praising and worshiping the Lord is really important for you and I. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that we would present our bodies as living sacrifices to God, which is our good service or good worship or reasonable worship to the Lord. Listen, I, what, the part I want to focus on is not just the presentation of our bodies to the Lord, that this is the temple of the Holy Ghost and we need to you know, cooperate with you know, keeping holy. It's this point that I want us to, to look at from this passage is that worshiping God is reasonable. It is our purpose. It is our reasonable service to God, is to praise Him. It is reasonable. Listen, our flesh, we get to a room and you want to praise the Lord or talk to Him out loud or whatever, and it might feel like, you know, oh, I'm losing my mind. Oh, what, what sensible person does this? How would I explain in public what I'm doing in private right now? Listen, I want you to think with the mind of the Lord and be transformed. Don't live. The next verse says, don't live to the patterns of this world any longer. Drop the humanistic, you know, inhibitions. Oh, don't do that. You're getting fanatical. Listen to me. Having a relationship with a person is sitting somewhere, talking with them, listening to them, engaging with them. How is it different with God who wants a relationship with us? This is not a day to be quiet. It is reasonable to bring worship and praise to the Lord. Second thing, when we praise and worship the Lord, our focus changes. It changes and we focus on Him. We start to lose the effects of, oh, this is what I don't have anymore. This is where I can't go anymore. Oh, how long is this quarantine going to last? We start to leave what we don't have and we start to remember who we do have. The focus turns to him, not me and not my preferences. It's not about I'm just stuck in my own thoughts inside and how I feel and what I miss and what I long for, all the stuff I don't have, how I would prefer it to be. No. When I begin to praise him and worship, I focus on him. And all my preferences, they just start to fade away because in the moment, he is what matters. It's why praise and worship is so important in our, our life. Third thing, why it's so important to praise and adore and worship the Lord is to help us get out of our own way. You've heard that before in, in life, probably over different things. You're getting in your own way. You're making this harder on yourself than it needs to be. You're tripping yourself up by your thought life or whatever it is, project, Something. Listen, praise and worship helps get us out of our own way. Because when we praise and worship Him, we start to leave behind our worries, our opinions. We learn to let stuff go because as we praise and worship Him, we remember who He is. We remember how great He is. And when we recognize that, 
We leave our worries and preferences, all of that behind us, and we move into a place that, yes, I remember this is who he is. I can trust him no matter what. No matter what I miss, no matter what I long for, no matter what I prefer, now I'm no longer focused on that. I am remembering what I still have and who I still have. You see, that's what matters. That's why praise and worship is so important. Fourth thing, why worship and praise is so important is that it is a sacrifice. In that moment where we praise and worship the Lord, and if you look through the Old Testament, that was part of praise and worship, was bringing a sacrifice. Well, Jesus became the sacrifice, so now our praise is that we sacrifice ourselves. We put aside um, our fears, we put aside our feelings, and we choose to worship him. What did Joshua say? You know this. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He says, choose today. Choose this day who you're going to worship, who you're going to praise, who you're going to sacrifice your feelings to, uh, for and your fears for. You're going to sacrifice. You're going to crucify those things. See, as we praise and worship him, we are making a choice. It isn't based just on our feelings. It isn't just based on, hey, life's going good. Oh, life's going bad. Might as well hang up my harp, not play my instrument, not use my voice to praise the Lord. Oh, things are so tough. And we choose to hang our our harp on a tree like they did when they were exiled. Friends, you might feel exiled. It is not a time for you to hang your harp on the tree. It is time for us to praise. It is time for us to worship the Lord. It's a time for us to remember who we have. It's a choice. So crucify your feelings and let the Lord know that he is greater than your fear He's greater than the things you get depressed about. He's greater because you leave those things behind. And in your action of praise and worship, the increased time of praise and worship, we do that together here. But we need to do that in our life. Every day, a time of praise and worship to the Lord. You know, the other week, um, my wife was sitting and she was watching the news and I knew she was there and I wasn't really paying attention to the news and I was in the kitchen and I was just talking to the Holy Spirit out loud. I was just, it wasn't my designated prayer time. I was just praising Him and talking to Him and, and my wife could hear me. And now it was, you know, competition between, you know, Listening to me talk to the Lord and the news was on. And <laughs> I had to say, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, I'll take it in the other room, you know. And uh, we've got to fill our life with that. We've got to fill our garage. We've got to fill our prayer closet. We've got to fill our vehicles. We've got to fill our walk with praise and worship to the Lord. I have to do it, one, because he's worthy, two, because I need to crucify myself, and three, I need to stop focusing on what we don't have today in being together and remember what we do have. Fifth thing, why praise and worship is so important, that we need to learn to praise and worship the Lord in our pain, in our loneliness, the challenges of life, whatever it is. I want to draw your attention to a time in King David's life Okay, it was in 2 Samuel chapter 12, and David, King David, was praying because there was a chance that his small child was going to die, very sick. And he fasted, and he prayed, and he wouldn't take food, and he just prayed, and he prayed. And get this, the child died. Didn't turn out like David prayed. Didn't turn out the way that David wanted. These days we're living. This isn't really turning out how we wanted. We want it to be very different. You know what David did after his child died? He left his place of prayer. He went. He got cleaned up. It says he bathed himself, got cleaned up, put lotion on, changed his clothes. And you know what he did? It says he went to the house 
of the Lord and worshipped God. I don't know how you feel when things don't turn out the way you want. Or you prayed so long for something to happen or to be different than the way it turned out. Does that affect your praise? Do you somehow feel like that affects God's credibility with you? Listen, David prayed, sought the Lord with fasting, with praying, with weeping, and it didn't turn out the way he wanted. I mean, he had to feel like we do sometimes in the sense where, didn't God hear me? Or doesn't God care? David didn't trip over any of that stuff. He said, okay, the child died. It's not what I wanted. But I'm going to go clean myself up. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to get dressed. And he immediately makes his way to the house of the Lord to worship him. We need to learn how to worship the Lord in our pain, our difficulties, our loneliness, in the moments where life isn't turning out the way I prayed, the way I hope, and we're tripping over, doesn't God care, and doesn't God hear me? David, the, the, the man who you know, had a heart for worship, a heart for the Lord, was he perfect? No. But I'll tell you what, in this moment, he gives us a perfect example of how important praise and worship is. His child dies, And he says, my reasonable thing to do in my mind is to worship the Lord. I need to go focus on God and not on my preferences. I need to get out of my own way, and I do that by worshiping the Lord and letting things go and letting my opinions go. I come to a place where I give sacrifice of praise, that I crucify my own will, and I choose to worship the Lord. And I need to prove it with an action by opening my mouth, or playing my instrument, whether things are going my way or they're not. These are five quick reasons of why you and I need to fill our life right now, where we live, where we spend our time. We need to praise and worship God. This is not a time for us to be quiet just because we can't get together. This is a time to celebrate the Lord and His grace and His mercy. And who he is. And to draw us to repentance and draw us into fellowship with him. Listen, I want to give you one last historical account. It's in the book of Acts. It's chapter 16. And here is Paul and Silas. Okay? They're at a location where they go every day and they teach and they go to pray. All right? And they're doing this. Well, all of a sudden, after uh, they're there... There is a lady who is possessed of the devil. It's a younger woman, that's what the scripture says, and she she follows behind them, telling everybody, This is men of God, he's gonna proclaim the way of salvation. She was doing this constantly, day after day. Finally, it irritated Paul and Silas. And Paul discerned and he turns around and he casts the devil out of this woman. The town's astonished. Well, come to find out that that when she did this, possessed of the devil, and she would do her mystical stuff with people, that they would be compensated. People would pay to find something out that she could be a seer and tell them stuff. They would pay for it. And she was working for some people. And when they find out that she was delivered of a demon, that their money went away. And so they go to the authorities and the magistrates and, and the leaders, and they say what has happened. And they you know, tell about Paul and Silas and their disturbance in the city. And so they get arrested, Paul and Silas. That they're not allowed to go and pray, and they're not allowed to go to the house of the Lord anymore. And not that they're on house arrest. They beat them, strip them, whip them, and put them in prison. And they tell the guard, you make sure they're secure. So the guard doesn't just put them in a cell. He puts them in an inner prison within the prison. You might feel like you... (laughs) You're in a bit of a prison. You don't get to go about freely like you used to. and 
You're just thinking about what you don't have. Listen, this is not a time for depression. This is a time to remember what we still have and who's for us. So Paul and Silas are in this inner prison. I mean, they're in prison within prison. Not only are they in this inner prison, the guard puts chains and shackles even on their feet. This ain't the way it's supposed to go. I mean, they're doing good. They're delivering people and setting that girl free and they're praying and they're helping people. Now they're in prison. This ain't the way it's supposed to go. Oh, Silas, oh, man, this ain't going good. Oh, Paul, this is terrible. Oh, where's God? Oh, and, you know, we can't leave. We can't go. The food's no good. Blah, 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 blah. Listen to this. Round about midnight, in one of the darkest hours, as they're in that inner prison and shackled, do you know what they do? They begin to sing hymns. <laughs> they begin to worship and praise in an inner prison, in shackles, in the maybe one of the darkest hours of their life. And they begin to praise. And they begin to worship. And the other prisoners, they can hear them. They were not inhibited. They didn't say, this is a time to hang up our harp. This is a time to not sing. Oh, let's long for what we had before. No. Paul and Silas, they said, this is not a time to be quiet. This is a time to worship and praise the Lord. And as they begin to worship and praise the Lord, and the other prisoners are hearing this praise of God and this worship of God, from people who are in an inner prison, shackled up with, from a human perspective, they don't really have a hope or a future. It was unknown to Paul and Silas what would happen, but I'll tell you what, they worshiped and praised. They got the eyes off themselves and what they missed or what was going wrong from a human perspective, and they began to praise, and they began to worship. And do you know what happened? You can read it in Acts 16. A great earthquake comes up. And it shakes the prison. And it allows through the shaking of the prison for Paul and Silas to actually go free. Where shackles fall off and the door is open. I mean, they can walk out and leave. You can read the rest of the story. But I want you to know that this is a time of praise. This is a time of worship. This is not a time of, oh, we can't get together. Oh, I miss my friends. I mean, they're, those are very real things. But they cannot determine the course of our day. We must choose to worship and praise and let God come and shake the foundation and have an impact on other people. Friends, in your home, you need to fill your mouth with the Word of God. You need to fill your mouth with praise. If you play an instrument, listen, Get it out. If you haven't played it for a while, get it out. Make a marvelous noise unto the Lord. A joyful noise. This is not a time to be quiet. This is not a time for God's people, the church, to be quiet. This is a time for us to praise the Lord.